So this process happened just a few months ago, so it shouldn't be hard to find. So at the start of the year, we were introduced to our teachers. All of them were good teachers except Miss C. So we went through our classes, and in each one we got those cheesy beginning of the year introductions. It was quickly clear her class wouldn't be a normal health class, as evidenced by the fact that during her introduction she went off about how terrible her divorced husband was. So classes started picking up and her insecurities somehow kept making it into lectures. One day a few weeks into school she just stopped showing up to class, you know her job, consistently. And now at this point everyone was cutting her some slack because she was a single mom, but it just got worse. We would have to do the whole units from a workbook with improvised substitutes who were actually most of the time school staff with no idea what they were doing. This culminated when Miss C missed two weeks of school for no apparent reason. Most of the class could see her mental deterioration. Me and some friends in class started noticing some form of distress from Miss C. More and more stuff about her personal life would leak into lectures when she was there. Suddenly it came to a head. She suddenly became distant and developed a tough shell around her. Miss C actually started coming to school consistently too. She started bringing her kids into class, closer to toddlers but still. I have a hunch that she started doing this to help justify her inaction to her employers. One day she just sort of broke down in class about how horrible her ex-husband was for not taking equal responsibility for their kids. It was a bad joke at this point about how long Miss C would last before being fired. Unlucky for us, it was too long. We just sort of endured lectures from this mentally unstable woman. Mind you, she was doing a fine job at suppressing traits associated with that around other school employees. One day, we come in and she wasn't in class, breaking her streak of actually coming in. We then got her answers about how long she would last. A counselor walked into the room. Everyone knew what was up. She was gone. But what had gone down exactly? She had walked into her ex-husband's house on a Sunday before that class period. Her excuse to her ex was to deliver cold medicine to her kids. After threatening to call the cops after her home invasion, she locked herself in the bathroom. She called the cops and unlocked the door to the bathroom. She then walked over to her coat, pulled out a gun, and opened fire on her ex's girlfriend, killing her. Missy was pinned down until the cops showed up. This wasn't her first offense either. Suspiciously close to the time when she hardly showed up to her job, she had several assault charges against her and somehow managed to keep it a secret from her job. Weirdly enough, students who didn't have her as a teacher didn't take it seriously. It took less than 30 minutes after the info was made public to the students for them to make a meme page about the incident. Weird how that worked. It got taken down. Anyway, mentally unstable teacher who committed aggravated murder and let your insecurities leak into your teaching. Let's not meet again. Ms. M, it's been about 12 years or so now. I know you don't work there anymore, thankfully. I don't know what could have possessed an adult woman, 50 years old, no less, to torment and torture a child to their breaking point. Maybe you're just a miserable old bitch or was a loser in school, so you targeted other losers to bring yourself up, but how you treated me and evidently others was not only unprofessional, but very cruel and damaging. I was a good student before. Ms. M had my family members in years prior. Unlike me, my cousins and siblings are rowdy and can be a handful. She had words with my family before, so when I came along, I was a symbol of my family which she would take out her anger upon. I was meek and obedient, a perfect target. Ms. M would humiliate me any chance she could get. She would bring me in the front of class, call me stupid, idiot, ugly, pointed out when my legs weren't shaved, told me I looked like a boy. Mind you, I had long hair and stuff, just didn't wear makeup at that age. You would talk to me very slowly if I asked any questions. Talk to me like an actual dog, bad girl, go fetch, beg, etc. Told me I smelled bad. The list goes on and on. 
she would sometimes aggressively pat me on the head and shout, good girl, when I completed one of her dog commands. She would actively encourage the other kids to make fun of me as well and further isolated me from everyone. I started to fear any interaction with her. I feared my classmates as well. A boy in my class was being relentless and made me cry one day, so I retaliated and threw a pencil at him. I was berated heavily and treated even worse after that. So I learned to shut down and take it all. My grades slipped. I cried every day at home. I kept most of it to myself, which Miss M probably knew I would, which is why she went so hard on me. My parents did try to get my class switched, but the school refused. Not only did Ms. M act like an angel around other adults, but the other classes were apparently packed to capacity, so I couldn't switch. But I also think my parents didn't try very hard. The teacher conferences made things worse each time. She'd be alright for a day or two, but the hammer would come down harder. I had to keep all the torment inside to survive. She made fresh hot chocolates for the class the day before Christmas break. When she gave me mine, I was scared and accidentally knocked it all over myself. Always was a clumsy kid. Instead of being concerned in the slightest, because it was literally scolding hot, she just let out a flurry of screams and threatened that I had better get it cleaned up quickly and spotless or she would make me sorry. I did as I was told and ignored the searing pain in my foot. I was not allowed to call to get a change of clothes and I was the only one not allowed to have more. The pain in my foot stabbed literally every second. It didn't let up all day, but I was so terrified. I said nothing and didn't shed a single tear, though it hurt like hell. When I got home and pulled off my sock, my skin came off with it from the burn. My mother was livid and finally stood up for me. After Christmas break, Ms. M was overly sugary to me. Why didn't you tell me about your foot, sweetie? And was overly accommodating. It scared me. I thought it was a trap. To my surprise, it lasted about two weeks. Must have had her ass handed to her. She wasn't as bad as before, but still sought to crush my spirit. On the last day of school, she refused to let me take any pictures of her. I wanted one to burn. She was very grouchy that day towards me, almost acting defeated. Although my grades were bad, I skimmed by and was moving to middle school. Her dog was off its leash and she was powerless to keep her toy. She was hoping I'd fail. After sixth grade, I stopped caring about school. I failed a year, barely skirted by others, landed in the dropout prevention program in high school. I had few friends, none of which I still have. I found it hard to trust teachers or authority figures anymore. I never made scenes or anything. I just sat there quiet and did nothing. Before I actually tried, actually cared. I had teachers disappointment in me because of how well I performed in math and on tests. I never had test anxiety and they wanted me in the math leads one year, but I just didn't care, which I attribute, at least in part, to Ms. M. She changed my life for the worse. The psychological damage Ms. M did to me cut deep it's hard to convey in a brief post what it was like every day for that whole year. She tore down what confidence I had. She made me afraid to trust anyone. She made me believe I was worthless. She made me feel every insult and criticism to the bone. She made me close into myself and learn to take abuse. She made me believe I was completely alone and had nobody in my corner. I was stupid, ugly, worthless, not even human. The kids from my school that came with me reinforced it as well. They also believed I was just a dumb dog and treated me as such. She dug her claws in deep and the scars still remain. I have tried to grow past it, but it's a hard thing to overcome. So to you, Ms. M, you're not a teacher. You're an abusive psychopath who used her powers of authority to tear down and relentlessly torture a child. I hated you then, but as an adult, I just feel sorry for you. I don't know what could possibly go through an adult's mind that would make them see a vulnerable little girl as a target for sick games. Maybe you saw yourself in me and hate yourself, since we were both kind of outcasts. 
so you desperately tore me down and encouraged others so you could finally feel like you belonged, even if it was a bunch of children. Either way, I'm glad you were finally removed years later, and I hope your stain on the world is soon wiped clean. I hope that others you did this to, which is why you got removed, live happy lives without having you as even a passing thought. We are not weak and do not deserve to be held as your victims. You did teach us that there are bad people out there. We may have struggled from it, but we pushed on. Hopefully none of us will ever meet you again. I'm not quite sure how to even start this story. A lot of things I've experienced never really fits in the subreddit's guidelines until yesterday when this story wormed its way into my head again. This story happened when I started at a new school in the middle of 6th grade. I'm 19 now. This was technically my first middle school and for so many reasons I transferred out. This definitely didn't help. About halfway through I switched into Spanish to finish out the year. I had almost always had a foreign language class, so I thought it would be a pretty easy grade to end with. There was a lot of buzz surrounding the Spanish teacher, Mr. D, and when I first saw him and how he acted, I thought I could tell why. He was a pretty eccentric guy who if you only heard his voice and weren't looking at his stern face, you would think he was pretty jovial. He almost always pronounced our names wrong, and he had this gigantic windmill on wheels in the corner of his room. The windmill reminded me that I actually heard about this teacher from an older boy called Jay in my Sunday school class. I remember telling him I was going to a school. My mom and I had ran away in the middle of my 6th grade year and I would start a new school after Christmas break ended. It was nice to know I had at least a couple people that I knew, so I asked them to tell me about the school or if they had any advice. Jay told me that if I ever got Mr. D to transfer out immediately. It sounded a bit dramatic, but as we got more acquainted with Mr. D, so too did he get more acquainted with us. One thing that always made us uncomfortable was how he would rub chapstick on his lips very aggressively for like a minute, which was definitely made worse when he'd stand with one leg resting on something and his crotch leaning forward. Sure, it's pretty uncomfortable, but not the worst thing in the world. Just a bit odd. Have you ever seen a woman with her boobs rested on a desk? Sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it's on accident, especially when you're short and sitting down. Mr. D started doing this, but with his dick. He'd stand close to the desk to look at our work, but his bulge would be laying on their desk. He wasn't desk dick height either, so he had to stretch a little to do it. But given how strange he already seemed to be, I brushed it off as him not being self-aware. I just feel bad for the first row. Flash forward, all of his little idiosyncrasies seemed to be more prominent as the days marched on. I remember once he even answered his phone and carried on a conversation for a bit before stepping out of class. A side note, he wasn't a great teacher. He wasn't even a good teacher. English obviously wasn't his first language, which was fine but he was there to teach Spanish. Unfortunately, he didn't speak Spanish either. He always tried to use a school PC to pull up Spanish videos on YouTube for us to mindlessly stare at on his personal laptop. Like I said, a pretty easy class. I just felt bad for the other students who didn't already know certain things when the test came. We walked in one day and on my desk and the desk in front of mine, there were semi straight lines of off white liquid it was mainly on my desk and thinned across the chair and the desk in front. Mr. D came over, not quite fast enough as the kid began to ask me what it was. All we got was nothing as he very quickly wiped away with his hands and rubbed it on his pants. He couldn't say it was water because it wasn't clear. It really only looked like one thing, but there wasn't any way to definitely prove it was. I tucked my hands in my sleeves and did my best not to touch my desk. A few weeks after that, I came into my English class I had at the end of the day to hear one of the girls having a pretty loud argument with our English teacher. I walked in at the middle, but the girl, Megan, was extremely upset and asking why she shouldn't go to the principal. Megan was a bit of a hothead, sure, but she was still a really nice girl. I couldn't see her dramatizing a situation this much.
I found out what happened from my best friend at the time, who was in Mr. D's class when it went down. Their class was ahead of us, so their test was scheduled for that day. After papers were passed out, Mr. D went back to zoning out on his laptop until Megan needed to ask a question. She had her hand up for ages and he never noticed her, so she went over to where he was and freaked out at him. He was watching porn with the sound off on his laptop that he always brings with him and gave all his attention to. So when I came in, Megan was being reprimanded for being pretty verbal with Mr. D. Our teacher was basically telling her she shouldn't have been upset with the teacher watching porn in class and that that's his laptop as if that nullifies anything. Looking back, it explains so much of his shifty behavior, the desk dick rest, the hardcore stares, the personal laptop all the time, and the definite cum on her desk. It wasn't the first time he had done it, and it wouldn't have been the last time if he hadn't got suspended for the rest of the month. Mr. D disappeared, and we had a sub to finish out the rest of the school year with us. I got the fuck out of that school after everything that happened, but still keep in touch with a couple of friends who went. They told me that Mr. D was back for a while as the gym teacher and co-soccer coach, and the next year taught English. I really want to say it surprises me that he was brought back, even without knowing about anything he teaches. In hindsight, that school was atrocious. I have so many memories of bad shit students and teachers alike did. Another teacher was also given suspension for actively looking down girls' shirts and up girls' skirts when they bent over. It's just concerning to know Mr. D still works there. I've had a lot worse shit happen to me and I still suppress this memory for ages. So teacher, who came on my desk and definitely scarred some kids for life, let's not meet. So when I was 7 years old, I was in kindergarten. My birthday is late in the year, so I couldn't apply when I was 6 like most kids since it was through the school year. We had a teacher, Mr. H, but this isn't about him. It's about a substitute I had one day. I admittedly don't remember his name as he was only there for one day. Mr. H was amazing, very caring, very good with kids. This substitute was not. He was generally weird and quiet and didn't talk to us much besides what was absolutely required, like our daily story time. Issues arrived at story time. I was wearing a skirt with leggings underneath it. I was never feminine. Turns out I'm trans, so it makes sense. So I didn't cross my legs like a lady and like my parents taught me. But hey, I was seven. So after story time, we had a little time that was like a free period. So kids painted, some just talked, some napped, or ate snacks. I was an avid reader, so I was reading like usual, sitting in the reading corner. The substitute was sitting there too. Nobody else was in this corner. The substitute turns to me and says, very bluntly, are you wearing panties? Because it doesn't look like you are. Keep this in mind, I didn't have my legs widespread. Just not crossed. I also had leggings under my skirt. Also for the record, I was wearing panties. At the time, I was being abused sexually at home, so I honestly didn't think much of it. That sort of stuff was normal to me at the time, but I was still a little put off. I decided to read somewhere else and got up to move to the other side of the classroom. The substitute followed me. Throughout the entire block, the substitute followed me around the class, keeping his eye on me as I did various kid stuff, like playing with the sand table, painting, and reading. Every time we were doing anything complicated, like basic addition or spilling, he'd be hovering over me, even though I didn't need help. He was also very touchy. He was constantly touching my shoulder, running his fingers through my hair, among other things. He never directly touched me inappropriately but I was very uncomfortable with being touched at all due to the abuse at home. I ended up going home unscathed and honestly, I didn't even tell my parents. I didn't realize it was even weird until years later when I was about 11 and coping with the rest of my trauma that I realized that that was really, really creepy. So creepy kindergarten substitute teacher, let's not meet again and I hope someone braver than I caught you and you got what you deserved.